here we are. Thank you for joining us if you're watching on the YouTube special. YouTube tax on a little extra information. And I'm going to ask uh, my co-host, my friends, how do y'all feel about Martin Short? Um, did, did you ever see that movie where he plays a little kid? It's like Cliff or something. I don't remember what it is. Parts of it. That's, a, that's it, an old movie. I was say, I think that based, like, my entire worldview of him is founded on that movie, and it makes me want to jump out a window. Well, okay. Yeah, Interesting I can't stand take. Martin Short. <laughs> Interesting take. <laughs> yeah, can't stand him. Oh, what oh. about the rest of development? Oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> shoot me, shoot me. How can you not I like pinned that? the army man. <laughs> <laughs> I pinned him. That, now that that is good. No, I ask because I saw Natalie Bullet. make the face, and Nat Natalie does the very wise thing of avoiding almost all social media. Uh, what it was, yeah, it was. Uh, Friday was a fire on Twitter. You mean yeah, X? I guess maybe only Twitter only. <clears throat> you mean X? No, Sorry, I you renamed my... all the conference rooms in Twitter headquarters with X puns, including one that's just sexy. I love it. What an idiot! <laughs> I'm 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 devoted to his bit. He's got that Donald Trump energy where if he wasn't in charge of something, he would be hilarious. If he wasn't like yeah. ruining the Ukrainian war effort or something, yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. like, we no, should it... be able to laugh about all this. Well, we got to to keep from crying. Uh, <laughs> So Twitter was a flutter Friday because there was an article that came out that morning on Slate titled Why We Keep Putting Up With Martin Short by Dan Kos, I think his name is, K-O-I-S. He's an author, and anybody, anyway, everyone on Twitter was railing on him as a writer. He's a failed author. I don't know if that's true. They were acting as if he was, the, the replies. But the, everybody was just jumping down his throat because Martin Short seems kind of lovable. Oh, I'm sure he's a fabulous person. He seems fabulous. But man, I just... Like, I tried I mean, to watch that Only Murders in the Building show because I like Steve Martin. Yeah. I just can't... Man, I mean, there's just a lot of Martin Short in that. No, you were watching it because of... Uh... What's her name? You're a big Selena, Selena Gomez. Gomez. Selena Gomez fan. <laughs> yeah, big major. She's I, the one that's uh, saying video games, right? The, no, uh, that's Lana Del Rey. <laughs> <laughs> Noted Shoals resident, Lana Del Rey. Oh, that's mm -hmm. right. I forgot that, that she has that weird connect. Was it like her brother lives there or something? Yeah, she was here for a week and everybody lost their minds. So it was very funny. <laughs> Have y'all seen the... Martin Short's recollections of George Harrison floating around mm -mm. as like a, a rebuttal to, mm -hmm. you know, like here he's a fine, perfectly pleasant person, you know, he's right. a good dude. And he talks about going to somewhere in Hollywood, somebody's house and watching an early screening of the hunt for red October and smoking weed with George Harrison Mm, I, I want to see this. It's a great story. And it even, the <laughs> ending is like, will make you like George Harrison even more. Really? Okay. There, you know, there was a lot of responses and, re, re, like you said, rebuttals to this tweet. And just the, it was like, a, you know, Twitter's so infuriating because if you kind of dive in late, you you are so behind on whatever's happening. There's layers there's no, to the joke already. There's no context and yeah. it just pisses you off. That's, de that's so definitely I, true. It's so true. And that's uh, that's the downfall of it, but not the downfall, but that's the bad side of it. But anyway, I finally figured out what was going on with Martin Short and people had posted videos and things. And there's this one just beautiful clip of him on the Today Show in 2012. Did you run across that one? I haven't. So Kathy Lee Gifford asks him about his wife who had died a year earlier. I, I heard about this, yeah. And she says, how do y'all keep your love going so strong? And he doesn't miss a beat, doesn't act like anything's weird. And he just says, you know, we're just, uh, we're just in deep love. 
And, you know, he doesn't act like anything's wrong. And someone pointed out on Twitter, I think it was, that, that she would have lost her career or her career would have gone up in flames for a few months if she if he would have been like, you know, she's been dead for a year. Um, right. And it was just such a, it was a tender, beautiful television moment. And all because of Martin Short. Every time I see him on TV, like a talk show, I love it. But I, I can be a little like Donovan, where I'm like, he's a little too much. But at the same time, I remember him on uh, SNL when he would host in the in the 80s, and he was always so good there. Adam brings up that he's so good in Arrested Development, I, I too. Was gonna it's say, perfect. I, I, I actually uh, will 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 uh, admit him for Arrested Development and to the, the heavenly host. because. And what was the other one that so he did for that. Comedy Central? Jiminy Glick or something? In, I don't know in, that one. In the fat makeup, he would do a, a, a really lousy t- TV critic who was interviewing s- stars. There's a good one with him and Steven Spielberg, and he says, You've made a lot of movies. When are you going to do the big one? <laughs> <laughs> Just stuff like that, you know. It was good. between, kind of between two ferns before, between two ferns, and yeah. not as not as biting. It was a little more goofy. Yeah, but anyway, so Martin Short, I kind of like him. I don't know. I don't know that I would seek out a movie by Martin Short, or definitely not a TV show. Obviously, only it's, Murders in the Building doesn't appeal to me. It's there's a, it, yeah. Just after one episode, I'm like, I can't. Huh. And I do like Steve Martin. See, I'm the flip side. I, I'm not crazy about Steve Martin, but I oh, like interesting. Martin. What? Martin. I gotta yeah, go. I don't, I don't think Steve Martin's very funny at all. I don't think he's ever done anything funny. To me, he's just the most likable person on the planet. Yeah, I don't hate him. I just don't think he's funny. Uh, never you said you hated him. Before. That's what I Did heard. I say hate him? Oh, well. You've never seen Father of the Bride. One yeah. or two. <laughs> I've seen That would one. cure you for everything for Steve Martin and Martin Short. Is that like Meet the Fockers? <laughs> Meet the Fockers wishes. <laughs> That's the whole point, right? <laughs> let's keep let's keep it on the Twitter track. Sadly, oh, sadly. <laughs> uh, the, Adam, you sent us a tweet from Zach. What was his name? Zach something something. I've got it right here. Uh, Zach Sillerberg. Uh, And he says, I'll just read the tweet, and we'll go from there. Ahsoka is THE, all caps, show for people who love to be on their phone while they watch TV. Visually bland, every scene drags, tons of filler shots of people staring at objects, important dialogue (laughs) once every five minutes. The first show to feel like it's all missing. All it's missing is subway surfers under it. And we had a mini conversation. I haven't seen a second of the show. I just thought that... Some people are very good at Twitter, and that was like a world-class takedown of a program. In, a, in one tweet. Yeah. I'm not saying he's not wrong either. He's not completely wrong. I think it's not visually bland. I actually think it's visually entertaining, but I think that's almost all it's doing. Yeah. It's just it's, it's visuals. It's just so tied into like stuff you don't care about. <laughs> it's that. That's it. I think that's what's dragging it down. Th- now, those scenes he's talking about, I thought that that would pick up after I've seen the first three or four. I haven't watched the fourth or most recent, and I thought it would pick up a little, but the, I can see that, man, these scenes are really dragging. That does start to add up. The the first, I've only watched the first two. I'm not sure if I'm going to finish it, because yeah, you know, that's I, just the I, way I, I was just you. like, I, like... You know, you, you're sitting there and you're like, how long is this episode? Three hours? Oh, no, it's a tight 35 it's, minutes. Okay. It's 40 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Yeah. How much Reddit can you get through in 35 minutes? <laughs> it's, exactly. uh, I mean, they did this thing. I mentioned it when I talked about Ahsoka two weeks ago, where they're just constantly name dropping this guy, like as if to go, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. We've all... What's his name, Donovan? You remember. Thrawn. Grand Admiral oh, no, Thrawn. No, him, you, him you might even recognize. Even no, who are you, you thinking of? The Evan, or what's his name? E- Anakin? E- oh, the other... The Jedi kid? Yeah. I have Anakin. Anakin. Evan I Peters in this show? Evan Peters? It's Evan Peters. They keep going, Evan Peters from the Netflix show? You know. You the know. Guy. Peters. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we pause his name is evan peters i love it so much 
I kind of like him as an actor these days, too, and I used to not. Um, what's, oh, anyway, there's this Jedi, and, and it, you're supposed He's to know the him little man, the I like to think of him Jedi as. Jedi Master Peter. <laughs> no, his name's not Evan. I'm actually going to look it up, because no one watches this shit anyway. What's his name? How would I find it? Star Wars Rebels. Star Wars Peters. <laughs> <laughs> Characters. Evan. It's not Ezra. Yeah, Ezra, the little yeah. Jedi man, the little yeah, Jedi boy. Be. I guess is he? I don't know. Is he like I a mean, teen? He's, he's like, uh, what's your face's age, right? The Ahsoka. No, Sabine. No, the other girl. Sabine. What's her Sabine. Face? Yeah, Sabine. They're like the same. God, we're so. Our bo- I got our guys that we are Star Wars. Just gonna. I hope Remus. they don't watch this. No, I hope they do and like kill us uh, <laughs> verbally. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Adam gets killed tomorrow, so all right. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. It's been fun. Uh, mostly. Can we can we talk since this is bonus stuff and this is where people get to know us? Can we talk a little about that? About what? Your procedure. You dying You're tomorrow? To mine. Sure. So, so Adam, as an adult, is is getting circumcised tomorrow. And <laughs> time. Uh, no, you're getting a cyst removed. It's grown and grown and grown. It like, just kind of flared up at the beginning of August. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gotten so big that you went to one doctor and they were like, nope, go to the dermatologist. And they were like, nope, go to the well, surgeon. I went you're going to get to the surgeon tomorrow. They're going to be like, nope, you got to go to the, you, you got to go to down. Yale. I went to... <laughs> I went to the first one and I was already like, I don't care how much this hurts when they drain it or whatever they're going to do. Just for the love of God, let's get it over with. And that was just like going to see the doctor. And they said, well, you actually have to see a dermatologist or a, even a general surgeon. Because it's so uh, mundane that the dermatologists don't really do it that much. Like it's they're so like, yeah, mundane. It's just like, yeah, because they're like worried about like catching skin cancer and like mm-hmm. you know doing all those sorts of more important procedures. I've told y'all. I think everybody here. This seems to be like the cross section of not at all dangerous to your health, but really gross that these yeah. doctors and surgeons yeah. love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not dangerous. It just hurts, and you want it gone. And and these people right, could make dangerous. a real show out of it. Not remotely dangerous. Uh, yeah. So they. But it turns out it's enough of a procedure that tomorrow they're going to sedate you with anesthesia. <laughs> and yeah. You you've got to do the special wash to, in the morning. I got to get the the wash, I and I got to. So I went in on Thursday, and you know you spend like the twenty four hours leading up to it. I hate the doctor. I hate going to the doctor. Unlike me, who lives there, I, the just to, I just visit my doctor for just like, hey, what's up? The environment already makes my blood pressure spike and heart rate, and so I'm just like not, not. I always think of that that Bright Eyes song, "You Got to Get Me Out of the Hospital, Let oh, Me yeah. Die Outside." Please, That's a good one. just good. Drag me onto the street. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I I went and you know was already like I'm not like worried but definitely my body is anxious my mind is not that it's just like it's not a big deal but i'm ready to get it over with and the guy walks in and he looks at first he like can't help but touch it immediately it's on like the back of my neck and shoulder uh and then he thinks better and puts gloves on this it's not oozing if you're trying to put a mental picture at home it's nothing great it's it's just a big bump large very large mound yeah uh so he puts the gloves on and examines it and is like laughing the whole time. He's he's entertained by it. What sort of bedside manner is this? <laughs> it was actually <laughs> great because I, now I am the age where uh, like doctors are my age. You know what I mean? Instead of like being mm-hmm. like impossibly old people that mm-hmm. are just like the voice of God or whatever. So mm-hmm. uh, not only are they close, they're like actually my age. So this guy was younger. Uh, wow came in shook my hand said and he kept saying i don't know if you use the word dude but he definitely said man a lot you know like is it like man i said i got a little bump back there said man you got it yeah you got a bump back here so he like starts examining it and he this is when he starts kind of laughing and says to the nurse i think we're gonna have to go to the or (laughs) which is just like shocking if you think you're getting like a a moderately embarrassing gross thing taken off your shoulder one afternoon in a little exam room. And instead. And then, they, 
and instead they like give you the sheet of paper that says and first Fast. tomorrow it's tomorrow morning it's on 9 11 so i had to like act like a normal person and not say never forget or something like that <laughs> you will under anesthesia <laughs> you <Absolutely>. will <laughs> you will totally say it so they they yeah tell me all this stuff and they're like we're gonna have to first i thought well maybe he just like there are tools there that he needs or space or something that are not in the small exam room he's like well we're gonna oh, okay we're gonna like give you some anesthesia basically he was like we could try it here i don't want to try it here because i'm not sure we can get the skin around it numb enough to work on it's like great yeah, yeah. freaking great so i assume i'm getting the uh what's the stuff everybody gets for like a colonoscopy and such I, I, you got Propofol me but... or whatever yes that killed michael jackson yeah do i need to mention that <laughs> Should I bring that you already up? Did. Adam will under <laughs> anesthesia. It's, it doesn't bother me at all. No, it won't. I mean, this son of a bitch was taking it nightly to just as a sleeping aid. Have You're you, not doing that. Have you seen Robin Williams bit about that? No, but I'd love he, to. He says something like, uh, "Robin will, or Michael Jackson takes propofol to sleep. That's like getting chemotherapy for a haircut. That is a good one. Uh, but I've never, uh, I've never been since I was a tiny child who got tubes put in his mm -hmm. ear mm -hmm. in the, you know, I don't know, well over thirty years ago. I haven't, uh, haven't ever been under. So, it, Lord you know, knows what this is going to be like. I've, yeah. I've never been under in my life. Natalie, you? No. Nope. Uh, it, my brother and I have joked because we we're a family of insomniacs, pretty bad on some nights, and we've joked that. Yeah, Michael Jackson died on that stuff, but damn, if I could just have somebody come in every day and just give me just a small dose, just to sleep. They told me, he was like, you're going to, I said, like, sedation. What do you, and so mm -hmm. there's no, like, no tube down your throat, anything like that. It's just like, mm -hmm. you are going to be pretty loopy and won't really care what's going on. And they tell you that, but to... And again, we we don't. I don't know if it's if you're completely out or if you're asleep or if you're just so out of it you don't even know. You don't remember. Could yeah. be a combination of those. I just I think I go to sleep though. They just like put your brain to to sleep, which is yeah. horrifying. Dude, dude the, those the, the, there's about a two or three second mo moment when they say we're going to give you a little medicine, and as soon as they say that. You get like this two seconds of euphoria you've never felt. Yeah, and it's is, just like this is why people are like nodding on the sidewalk and uh -huh. pixelated. This is heroin, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not. It's not heroin. They're giving something, you something. Yeah, it's different. But you get the notion. It's just this two or three second of euphoria. And I remember I had hernia surgery this summer, and they gave they give you a little something like that to help you begin the process and. They said, she said, I'm going to give you a little medicine. And I'm just like, yeah, I think my wife knows you. I'm just like spilling my guts. Like, I think my wife knows you. You're, you're a good person. <laughs> you know, and then it's just like, conk. <laughs> anyway. When they did that, you got the breathing tube and everything, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, because they had to give you probably that sedation stuff to do the rest of the breathing yeah. tube. And, I suppose. I woke up and I was like, my throat's sore. And they're like, yeah, we did the tube and everything. I was like, oh, I didn't realize. It's probably good not to know. Yeah, it's totally good not to know. Back in the day, you used to kind of know that stuff. I mean, even like going in, mm. like I would rather not be thinking about the fact that there's going to be a tube down my throat. You know what I mean? I, I didn't know. Yeah, total surprise. Let's good start stuff. the official show. We're going <laughs> to jump into our... good good 20 minutes of... Uh... <laughs> Hey, here we are, people. It's me, it's Adam, it's Natalie, it's Donovan, and we, we've we been having a good time. Let me tell you something. The bonus YouTube is turn it into something this week, especially. You you go in there, and you can uh, skim through some parts. You can hear medical advice. <laughs> Natalie Natalie looks horrified already. Natalie's always horrified by us. She is. So, well, but... not always, but... Most uh, of the time. So let's get into... We're going to talk two things, mainly. Um, we're going to do some brief talk, general discussion, no spoilers about the Changeling from Apple TV. We'll take a quick little break, and then we'll talk about uh, the challenge, which I didn't see us doing this weekly, but, I, I mean, 
I really wanted to talk about it. So we'll let's do that again. The YouTube bonus is a video. It's video only, but I mean you can play it in the background. Uh, what do we talk about this week? We talk about Twitter a lot. The Twitter discourse. There's a couple of Twitter things happening. Anyway, go listen to it. You can you can jam that or audio only. That's it now. That's what you're doing now. Uh, so the changeling from Apple TV. We're going to get probably more into this. It's quite, quite possible. Next week, we're going to break it down in like more analytical form. I'm going to put a lot of my ideas to the side for, about that. It's uh, it's an Apple TV production. Uh, they dropped three episodes. I've watched one, which is why we're pumping the brakes on any spoiler stuff. But it's from author Victor... Uh, help me out, Donovan. Victor... I never heard anyone say it out loud. I've always it said Laval. 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 I thought Laval. Yeah. yeah. Both of those make sense to me. Author Victor Laval's book is where the show stems. A uh, book by the same name, The Changeling. It's not to be confused by the 2008-ish Oh, the Angelina movie. Jolie one? Yeah. Did you ever yeah. see it? That was all right. Wasn't that Clint Eastwood? Oh, yes. That? You were exactly am I, am right. Am I nuts? Okay. It's did fine. Did you guys she, ever I see mean, it? She's fine. It's fine. It's really interesting. I'll take a Perry Mason any day, thanks. It's got a Perry Mason vibe. <laughs> yeah, it totally does. Kind of Perry Mason probably season one ripped from that <laughs> a, li- a little. Anyway, I always thought it, that they were the, one and the same. When I heard Apple was producing a, a version of The Changeling, I assumed, oh, they're going to expand the, that movie, maybe? I guess they could do that. That would be interesting. I kind of, you guys might be like me. You can agree or no. I kind of have trust with Apple TV now. Do you guys? I think so. I don't think I've watched enough. Really? I've watched Severance. The, the person I was bumming it off of doesn't have it anymore, so I haven't watched any recent stuff. You can, you can bum but, it off uh, me. Okay. Say, I liked Severance a lot. Ted Lasso, season one, yes, very much so. Have I watched anything of Shrinking? That, I, uh, I don't think I watched that one. Didn't watch Shrinking? Silo? We're fan. We were fans. Yeah, of no, yeah. yeah. Did you finish Shrink- Silo? I had them in that one. We, we didn't totally finish it. We've been slowly. Which that's like because there's been so much going on. That's like our. Oh, we really do have a quiet weeknight going on here. We'll watch watch Silo. I agree though. I mean, even Silo, I don't like. It's not going to be in like a year end list for me no. if I had to make one. No. But it is of a quality that I think is higher than what the other streaming services are consistently hitting. Yeah. Apple, they they pump the money. The thing I like about Apple, it's well done, it's well produced, sets look good, things like that. But they're pumping the money in there, but they're not doing it like a Netflix or even an HBO these days where it's you get a new show every week. Like they give you time to consume a pretty decent show or two. And then they bring out, they roll out another decent show or two. I mean, Netflix at this point is just like a blitzkrieg of. It's ridiculous. Like, let's let's throw everything at the wall and hope that something sticks, which is frustrating. And HBO moving that way is, you know, Sad. last week y'all y'all said something about, or maybe the week before, is this an HBO or an HBO Max production? And it just like bummed me out that, that I mean, that HBO was the Apple TV for, a, I mean, so long. Mm hmm. They got a cool new boss, and he loves reality TV. I, what could go wrong? Even as much as Natalie likes reality TV, and and I sometimes I don't mind it. It's just it's a like, little no weird. No one was right? asking for that in Max, and they took Not out so Max. much good stuff. It's just like I don't need your HD TV shows, David. I don't know if he actually does HD TV. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know uh, what well, Discovery owns. I don't care. Blackbird was on Apple TV <laughs> Plus from last year, and it made one of my. It made my list. Um, it was super good, super good. Uh, the problem with John Stewart, I, I watch it off of Apple TV. I think that's pretty decent. Um, I'm just skimming through what, what I have here. For all of mankind, it's supposed to be good. I've never had the chance to watch it. Anyway, I'm what I'm intri- saying, I'm intrigued is, by the premise. Yeah, me too. For that one, I, and I liked Battlestar Galactica. I thought that was pretty good. It we doesn't. Do <laughs> oh, did we? I didn't. <laughs> I'm intrigued by, I like that Apple TV Plus doesn't seem to go lowbrow, even with their comedies. It's like yeah. they're, they're putting in the effort. 
Yeah. And even with like shrinking or something like that, that, you know, that could be like a network show. Kind of the bones of it are there, but it doesn't, like you're saying, it yeah. doesn't go lowest common denominator with all the jokes or with the the plot lines or whatever. And it keeps it, you know, the, the folks who, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, Scrubs. Oh, Bill Lawrence. That Bill Lawrence, you know, obviously can work in conventional television mediums, but giving folks like that kind of a, uh, you know, longer leash to do what they want to do. It's good. It's good stuff. I agree. I, I have good so, news for you, though, Blaine. Mm-hmm. Writers are on strike. Actors are on strike. We might get a lot of time to digest some shows from HBO. This is true, or Apple, or whatever, because... <laughs> It's, it's going to start, the deluge is going to turn into a trickle sooner than later. I'll tell you one thing that's been weird is being online and realizing that some of the people in anonymous environments, or, you know, at least you don't know, there's no human attached to the name that you're seeing, even if it's the real name, like Twitter or Reddit or whatever, people not remembering the writer's strike from 15 years ago. You know, like they, when people say like, oh, uh, this is a bad day for my brain. The, the hero show with heroes, heroes. Yeah. Yeah. People are like, <laughs> was it called <laughs> heroes? It was heroes. What was yeah. that show called with all the heroes in it? I said hero, at least, uh, hero <laughs> squad, I'm sorry. uh, heroes. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's sharp as attack when it comes to arrest development, but it's right there. That's what takes up all your brain space is all these <laughs> arrested development bits and quotes. Uh, <laughs> uh, but like people were watching that show or like Friday Night Lights and saying like, "What? Why did? Why is there this like line in the sand that yeah. there's a before and after of these shows? Like, well, because the writers. How do you not know? Mm. And how do we?" People maybe are not prepared for what what it'll mean this time. It made a couple of seasons of shows shorter, right? Didn't Breaking Bad have a shorter season one of those years? The Office did too. They cut their episodes short. <clears throat> maybe Matt did it affect Mad Men. So I'm trying to remember it everything. It, yeah, yeah, like any, things any of the no. comes, Yeah, yeah, because it was on the air. I mean, they it were didn't affect Mad Men as far as the number of episodes they did, but it, it, it put it on a hiatus. Okay, Crazy. that was it. Which is why Bobby probably changed actors 15 times. <laughs> That's probably what they told the kid. He was off track, too. He got too old. <laughs> all right, Victor, which is all to say, we're, we're going to very briefly, <laughs> not so briefly, discuss uh, this book turned into a show the changelings not the one from clint eastwood and angelina jolie uh victor love laval that sounds right to me okay i'm sorry if i get anything say it with wrong. confidence it doesn't matter I, I, I do this all the time in the classroom i'm like so and so and always do a question mark you mean way <laughs> <laughs> ernest william william faulkner <laughs> it's like i'm in the black uh, lodge right now <laughs> Black Lodge AP lit. Elam <laughs> Fulner. <laughs> That's good stuff. So he wrote uh, twenty uh, twenty three this year. Lone Women. Have you seen that one, Donovan? Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's like a you've read horror. it. Yeah, I bought it for my uh, or I say I bought it. We, we my library bought it. Oh, I didn't know you read um, it. I like read a, it like last. I read it like three weeks ago. Oh, it's good, I, right? It's yeah, like a good, it's so good. Uh, like horror western. Yeah, Almost, yeah. You, but like, uh, very very thoughtful. To, Agreed. Yes, but you so, know, quick quick moving and and just really very you know, good 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 book. Yeah, read Lone Women if you have it. It's uh, it's a new book, one of the new books I can recommend. Sometimes they're hit or miss, uh, and it's from the same author. This show, The Changeling, stars Lakeith Stanfield, and that guy oh, is that, a that treasure. Me, that makes me like it. Oh, Ready. exactly. He's such a he's such a joy to see on the screen. I always love seeing him in anything. He's this guy maybe in ten years if you tell me Vic, um, not Victor Lakey Stanfield's one of our greatest actors, that won't surprise me. He can do serious. He can do anything. 
he can do oddball like like scary weird oddball like in atlanta or he can do just a little quirk here and there in this show is what he's doing and it's he's a very normal guy in the show but he's got a quirk or two it's not bad um and i'll go ahead and give you guys this it's not a spoiler (laughs) by any means but don't you just love a main character who reads a lot what's your nerds what he he reads a lot. He's a character, and um, the opening scene is he's in a library. So, and he gets introduced to this librarian lady, and that's kind of your basis. These two um, get to know one another and start dating, and that's kind of your. I won't say much more because there's there's some reveals. I didn't really know anything other than they that they are together at some point. Okay. There's some mental engagement you have to do with this show to keep track of timelines and characters, but I found it so entertaining. I was like, oh, we're here. Oh, we're, now we're present day. Oh, we're only 10 years ago. It's very obvious. They, they they don't hold your hand, but they almost hold your hand. They don't hold your hand, but they point you in the right direction, so to speak. Um, And it's got this strange tone. And the tone... Everything that's happening is happening in a very normal New York, a very everyday New York City, uh, Queens to be exact. But you got this vibe that anything could happen next. And their first date, the librarian and Lakeith Stanfield's uh, lover of reading character, was quirky plus one. It was, okay, they're on a date. This is realistic. What they're saying feels normal. But you also had this feeling like they're, one of them's about to say something really, really weird. And I'll leave it at that. I enjoyed the first episode. I really wish I would have had time. I would have hit go on the second episode had I uh, had not been a little late. We'll probably dissect this one a little. We might analyze this one a little next week. Listeners, if you're in, if that sounds like it's up your alley, then... Let's just all hope it doesn't fall apart by episode two or three, because sometimes that happens, right? All right, let's take a little bit of a break, and on the flip, we're going to talk, uh, we got to talk about the Challenge US. I know we've been talking about it a lot lately. Let's just do it, though. The Challenge USA on CBS. Do, 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 do. All right, I got to, I got to shout out my... I got to get on to my CBS rep. I hope he's watching. I hope he or she's watching. Listen to me. I'm looking at the camera. You cannot switch to one a week after going two a week without notifying someone. And that someone's I'm me. Notifying you specifically. Me. <laughs> uh, Just you. I was getting twice a week fix, and now you're going to send me into low-key withdrawals. Speaking of propanol. <laughs> Jesus. I was texting furiously with Adam and Natalie, like, where's the challenge? Why is it not on? Do they air it simultaneously? <laughs> no, they don't even do that. You have to wait until it's off of CBS. Which, by the way, my I have direct TV streaming. My CBS isn't even on. There's a contract dispute. I can't even oh. watch it if I, if I wanted to watch it live. Wait, I how do you, where do you, where do you access it from? You, you, Paramount I Plus. I mean, the challenge, I mean. Paramount Plus. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. They put it. They put it there after it airs. You, it, they don't so, do a max thing where it's simultaneous. Uh huh. Yeah, and it's frustrating. Okay. So I was there Tuesday. No, excuse me, Sunday night, hitting refresh. <laughs> like, why? What? What the fuck did I do? Mashing that button. <laughs> just mashing it. Scrolling down. Let's talk about the challenge USA. The most recent episodes Thursday. They are now solely airing on Thursday per Natalie and CBS. I don't. I don't want this responsibility of... I'm holding you accountable for not That's telling fine. you this. I'm fine with it. How did you figure it out? Did, it, was there like a commercial or something for it? It just wasn't on. <laughs> I, did. I just did the math. <laughs> I, I used there, logic. There was something said... It's like called deduction? ...of the episode previous to it switching to Thursdays where like a voiceover said something like, the challenge Thursday nights on CBS, something like that. Because when you texted, I was like, "Oh, I remember them saying something like that." Oh, I, I didn't catch it. <clears throat> I mean, Obviously. it was pretty subtle. 
So they, the, the show itself, they go from individual, they quit the teams, no more blue, green, and red teams. But this daily challenge where they were to dive into the waters, uh, sink deep and look at the puzzle board, the word board, come back up, figure out what the theme of it was, all that. If you watched it, you know. Uh, they were still kind of working as teams, though, right? Because they did it in heats of four. And those four people usually kind of work together. If you'll figure it out and tell me, we'll do it that way. Didn't you see that kind of as like, oh, well, it's not quite individual yet. Well, I mean, they never, it seems like, I don't know, maybe, but Tori and Wes showed them what's what. Like, we can talk this team game all we want, but when it comes down to it, this is an individual game. And if you haven't realized that yet, then tough. Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy that part? Were you like, oh, yeah. yeah, do that? Yeah. So was I. Um, I, I messaged you guys and I was like, okay, didn't want to talk about challenge this week or was going to put it to the side for now, but I got to. And Adam responds, why? <laughs> why we got to talk about it? <laughs> what I meant by that was you, sometimes things happen on that show where it's like, I have to talk about this with somebody right now. Mm -hmm. And this was like a, a good episode, but nothing mm -hmm. stuck out to me as oh. like must chat. I didn't think because usually really? the like cliffhangers or backstabs or things like that are kind of what elicit that response. And this was just like a all around solid episode to me. Yeah, maybe it was the all around uh, good episode feeling of it that that made me say that. But I I just had. I just had opinion after opinion as the show was going. First of all, Sebastian, I haven't gotten around to him. He bores me. How's he around so late in the game? Is he the one that's uh, like flirting with Tori? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. He's got, that's he's got such... Round. Tyler also bores me. He's the uh, hat with hair that can talk. <laughs> yes. He's basically a hat that can talk. Sebastian gives me like... Tim Tebow vibes, or I'm trying to put my finger on why Maybe he's like so... Sebastian the Ibis? Sebastian the what? Is he like the Miami mascot in, in his name, Sebastian? Is that his name? <laughs> I always think of that whenever he's on screen. Uh, I always think of Donovan's cat, Sebastian. He sucks. <laughs> well, this guy does too. He's just boring, though. He's boring. He's just, he's like he's there just to pick up a chick or something. Like, I'm, I'm putting what I would think he would say. What I'm do you think? You know, Natalie, TV. you're our biggest challenge go to. You're our challenge, I don't know, expert almost. What, what do you think about him? I mean, he obviously isn't stupid. I mean, hook up with a challenge vet, you're going to stick around for a little while. She didn't help him in the uh, daily. Were they in the same heat? That's a good question, were they? I think so, because I remember yeah. thinking it was really funny, because she took oh, a very... Right. When she went for the last tour, he went for the last one with the flashlight, her jump off that little cliff made me laugh, because they were like, yeah. what is it? And she was like, see ya. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but that's, like that's Tori... That's Tori finally being a smart challenger as somebody mm -hmm. with a lot of history of on-screen hookups. Yeah. She's finally figuring out, I'm number one in this, and I'm going to take care of myself. And maybe she knows it's better to keep Wes happy than it is old boy. Another smart move was, I'm not sure if he meant it this way, but it worked perfectly, was bananas. He went down to the bottom of the, of the board. <clears throat> the theme of the board, Donovan, you'll love, is, was cats. So you went back to your, you went back to your, you did get your lock and it spells cats. And that's what unlocks your, you know, you, you used your little rotating dial there with a word, uh, but, Do uh, not Donovan, bananas goes down into the deep water and, and he sees the word pause, P-A-W-S. So he jumps, dives back up, starts swimming back to the, to the cliff and he yells back to them. It's pause, right? And so they're all thinking pause, like play pause. Uh -huh. So what a brilliant move because they go back and they're like trying to put in game or uh, play 
just brilliant. Because the, the ability to do off. that after like repeatedly diving underwater in that. very cold water and coming <laughs> up and then being like, can you give us a hint? And he thought of that. That That is a special, unique kind of genius. And that's or why it's just time. really lucky that it that worked too. out for him. Because I think he <laughs> I came up think. saying, I saw one word and it was pause. It's Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Is it one is it, or is it the other? Or, Didn't he say he saw some other or... words? He only saw the one? I don't know. Maybe he saw like Panther or something. I think he saw Panther. So maybe, mm. but yes, he did. He saw Panther and Paul's, and he knew immediately it was cats. But he only gave them Paul's. Good. Yeah, it's great. Every season, there are people who are saying so and so's a snake. Uh, and I'm curious if you guys think that these people being labeled as snakes are as deceitful as they let on, like Wes. There's a season, or maybe multiple seasons, where Banana says, well, what his strategy is, he makes a lot of promises to everybody in the house, or to a lot of people in the house. And then at the end, you're going to hurt somebody, right? And that it devalues the whole alliance by playing that way. Whereas Bananas, hasn't, we haven't really seen him talk game with anybody outside the challenge vets until Michaela this week. That's right. So now he's like kind of circling the wagons late in the game and putting his roster together, as he said. Mm -hmm. It seems pretty rare that people are just like straight up snaky. Yeah, they I get labeled. One, I think that's a mislabel. One, the one chick seems pretty, uh, she could be a snake. What's the, the survivor okay. girl? Uh, Michelle. But, and yeah. kind of like... But talking a lot to a lot of different people, it's not just like she's like quietly flying through. She's mm -hmm. got to be lying left and right. I agree. I agree with that. Uh, Bananas has the good quote this week that he stabs people in the chest and not in the back. And that seems accurate to me. Tell that to Sarah. How long ago was that? That's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. Do you still? I just think you, she would disagree. Yeah, completely. And do you, how long ago was it? Do you hold that against him? Is that still part of his game? Yeah. I'm pretty, oh yeah. yeah, it's so major. I mean, right? it's his most. Like he would say, "I'm most proud of that moment." Probably. Like ah, that's gotcha. what set um set off his whole new career trajectory. Mm -hmm. Was the attention he got around that move? So was that about uh, 2017? Has it been about five years ago? Yeah, probably 2016, maybe. Okay. Interesting. Yes, yeah, so that's still a part of his package for sure. Uh, Fessy and Josh want to play both sides of the ball more than Deion Sanders. Those guys <laughs> are like, are we Survivor? Or, excuse me, Big Brother this week, or are we Challenge Vets? They need to figure it out because that's going to come back and hopefully bite them. We'll see. When Sebastian and Tori decide to stay in for a confessional date, though, I knew Sebastian would be a target for elimination, and deservedly so. Once that, As soon as you see them sit down in front of the confessional camera, I'm like, wait, they're not at the bar with everyone? I was like, oh, they're going to get that guy. Who knew yeah. this was an option? Yeah, no. I, I always wonder, what about those people who don't drink? I guess they just go to the bar and get a water or a Red Bull or something. I don't think Fessy drinks, right? That's a good, that's a good question. And I, he may not. So he may be having a water or seltzer or something. I mean, I'm surprised CT isn't, like, in bed at 8.30 when everybody else goes <laughs> to the bar at this point. Pop, popping an ambient at 7.45 yeah. <laughs> and just being like, uh, did, okay, well, you know, we shit on Fessy. Again, deservedly so. I'll use that phrase again. Did he make a really good observation this game? Did you catch that? No. When he He's, talked about... Uh, Tori and Bananas outfits. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I was like, oh, wow. He gave a good confessional. He just said something kind of witty. What was confessional? Uh, that, I don't even remember it. That Bananas and Tori had screwed over kind of everyone. And so they matched their clothes to look like a couple. And uh, he said it so much better than I just did. It was pretty I, funny. I, I remember making written it. Yeah, I thought it was kind of witty. I thought it was kind of it was not only witty, but it was also like pointing out something that you as a viewer want want need to be pointed out. To me, that's what confessionals the best ones do. They're kind of funny, if not flat out funny, and they point out something to you that maybe you are in too big of a hurry to catch or something. 
And I thought, wow, he actually did that first. Time. And I swear I to really, God, it's the first time he's ever done that. I really need to know what he said now. Man, I, I should have written it. It was a, it was something about their apparel, how they were matching. And I was just, yeah. I was did just. Did y'all not notice that they were matching? No, I noticed, but he he like put a little a little analysis to it, and I thought, oh, that's kind of witty. It was it was funny analysis. Um, mm-hmm. and I, I, how do they get so matched up with their clothing? Because you know you pack obviously at your own home, and then you come and you like, oh, you get the same coat. How does I that love happen? that they remember when they all the like the spy trilogy or whatever they told them to bring like spy apparel. Oh, did they? Yeah, so like you had like everybody had black turtlenecks with gold chains on. Yeah. Uh, now I have the opinion of Wes that he can be a pain, but he's a pain in the way I want him on the show constantly. Um, he, he's especially a pain in a veterans only game, but his biting vote of Cassidy with just putting the one ball in the hopper was so nice, especially how he started giggling about it. It was funny. I was like, okay, if you're going to have Wes, then that's that's the Wes you want on TV. They're really also like, the- oh, sorry. I just really like mm. that Cassidy thinks that like Wes has singled her out as like the one to take down when really that all started when his team kind of tricked him into voting for her. And then he was like, well, I got to keep voting for her. Like this was never a choice that Wes actually made. This was not a strategic choice in the beginning. But Cassidy's mm-hmm. like, oh, I guess it's it's an honor that he's targeting me. He's like, he's not. He's that's not. not what's it's, happening. That's what I was going to say is it's 100% them knowing how to burn votes. Yeah. Yes. But he did so in such a <clears throat> comedic way, I thought. Especially in this uh, confessional. Yeah. Speaking, speaking absolutely. of confessional. Uh, was this the most frustrating elimination ever to watch or to perform or to try? There have as, been worse, but this was um, like a classic man, like, throwback was, challenge. It was tough. I, I think there have been ones that are, you know, like hold your hand above your head kind of stuff that seem terrible, but I don't know. There were moments where I was thinking, like, did anybody in production actually do this <laughs> successfully? I wondered like, the same can it even thing. Be done? I wondered the same thing. I thought they were going to be there until they had to call it in some fashion or they had to... Or like the sun was going to come up or something. Yeah, totally. Wow, and it was I mean, frustrating to watch in in yeah. in not a not necessarily in a bad way, in a sort of a tense way where you were just like, "Good God!" Yeah, I thought it was really good, but it was it, as far as like competing. I don't know. There's there's like the endurance ones like that are just so stupid, like hold your hand over your head or whatever, but. At least in that, like, you know that as, long, as soon as the other person drops it, there's a chance of victory, right? But this one, mm-hmm. it's like, how many times do they think this is impossible? That's a different form of, like, complete hopelessness. Donovan, they were in front of a table, mm-hmm. and they were to build a pyramid of just normal balls, you know, pyramid, okay. of, which is hard, right? You know, you yeah. build it. They fall over. But the thing was, they were attached to the table. So when they walked away, the rope would spin the table. <laughs> and so as soon as you set a ball up, it just spins it off. And I think the challenge lasted, uh, what, three hours? Very close to three hours. Over three, yeah. Wow. Did you feel sorry for Monty? Having had no. to do this and not this, you know, we talk about, okay, we're glad you didn't get a physical elimination because you would have dominated, but, but Tyler, come on, does he even need to be on the show? No, I mean, they both, one of them, that was a good battle for a slot to remain on the season. You know what I mean? Like, we don't need both of these guys. And then Monty says, I'm a, I'm a mechanical engineer. And then he can't quite get the mechanics of this because it involved him being slow and steady too i mean it he seemed to make more progress faster right like you understood Mm -hmm. like how to build the thing it was just keeping it uh, miserable anything i I haven't mentioned from the challenge is there anything y'all wanted to talk about those were my thoughts natalie who you got out of the uh tory for the first time talked a game with 
people outside the the challenge vets or that was mm-hmm. shown doing that. You know, she has like her her trio now of Michaela and the two others, Chanel and Chanel, Izzy. Who Chanel is <clears throat> like we I think we talked about this last week that she's barely been on screen. Like this most recent episode, she had more lines than she's had all season. Could be a hint. She'll win. Yeah, she's she good. I'm calling it. She's gonna win this this season. That I wanted to ask, like, who do you think? Because I think the winner, women's winner, is coming out of those four. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. But I think yeah. it'll be her. I think everybody's afraid of her. And I think Tori, she may make it to the final. I don't think she can beat her. I think she'll get, especially if the final is going to be, I guess it depends on if they do pairs or if it's just singular. I don't. Tori winning last season, I think is kind of a fluke. I think she got really lucky with the people that were around her. Hmm. I think she's a finalist. In almost any season she does, but I don't know that she's got a lot of wins in her. She always has the votes, so she's a finalist. That's reasonable. What about the men? It's going to be somebody dumb like Chris. (laughs) Chris is going home this week. That's my prediction. That would be great. Yeah, he's kind of, he's lame, but not dislikable. I guess that's the same way with Tyler, who I've complained about a lot in the last two weeks, but I don't know. Tyler's just like, bruh, dude. Just you notice that they, that. some of the guys said, well, Tyler has finished last in every daily challenge. Mm. Which they don't always show, like how, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's apparent to them, maybe not who won every time, but they probably know who the worst person was. Yep. Getting beat right. by Josh. That's a tough look. Josh's game has improved. I'm gonna, it has. I'm going to tell you that. It's nothing I want to say out loud, but I just did. Speaking of the worst, this worst podcast ever. It's going to wrap. It's so good to see my co-host once again. We're part of the Alabama Take podcast family. You can go to that site and find... All kinds of things. I'm going to do a quick plug I haven't done. Uh, subscribe to Adam's Substack, which Lord. is called... No, it's it's good. I thought it's kind of, I thought it was kind of thoughtful. I was reading them the other day. I didn't know they existed until you posted on Instagram with a link, and I was like, what? Well, so, I went public public with it, you know. Okay. I've been, been well, that, working on it. That's me from the Alabama Take at gmail.com. I, I don't know if you saw that subscriber. I did. Yeah, that's me. Thanks, man. Yeah. Insightful stuff. He writes about his music and how those songs came to be. Fun stuff, you know, if you want the insight of, like, how's that song happen? Where do you get, where, how do you land on that line? How do you make compost? How do you make compost? There's a lot of that, too. Hmm. Well, all right. Find Taking It Down, that's us, in almost any social media site with Taking It Down Pod. Uh... Yeah, and we're always on the Alabama Takes YouTube page since we're part of that ne- podcast network. You can watch the video version of this show, or you can listen to the audio there or in any podcast app. Is that enough information? That's too much. Is that enough? Adam's burning something, so we got to let y'all go before he <laughs> before he gets crazy. See everyone later.